Hey everybody, welcome back to New Stuff TV, the untechnical tech channel. I'm your host, Antoine. I need some screen real estate Richardson because today we're gonna to be talking about pads. Not just any pad though, the OnePlus pad. This is the OnePlus pad. Man, OnePlus has finally done it. Hey, I got a question for you. Do you still use a tablet? Is there still room in the tablet space of all things tech? Do people still buy them? I do. Actually, I have a confession to make. I actually have two tablets, but now I got three because the OnePlus pad is in the building. This is their first ever. And it actually kind of, it almost completes something that I thought OnePlus was missing ever since I got a chance to try out the OnePlus 11 and the OnePlus Buds Pro and that is an ecosystem. We now have what I would call an ecosystem amongst these three, uh, three things. Now, in my opinion, a tablet is supposed to be an extension of your phone, right? So it's supposed to operate a lot like your phone. It's supposed to communicate with it back and forth pretty seamlessly and just be a bigger version of your phone that you can do more things on like work, social media consumption and stuff like that. So we're gonna talk about this OnePlus pad, but I do wanna just kind of show you some tablets, man, because this right here, the OnePlus pad, it's actually, all right, look, man, software can get pretty expensive. Luckily for you, we have this conversation right now. I've actually found a cheaper solution for you. It's called Software Keep. Take this for example. I'm on the Microsoft website right now looking at Windows 11 Home and they got it priced at $139. But if I click over to softwarekeep.com, they got the same software for $84.99. Now, typically Software Keep is about 25% less, but in that case, it was a whole lot less. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is it even legit? The answer is yes. Software Keep is just a certified Microsoft partner simply selling genuine Microsoft programs for less. They also give you lifetime year round protection on all your purchases, whereas Microsoft only provides you monthly or yearly subscriptions. Software Keep also provides a lifetime product guarantee and a 30-day money-back guarantee, whereas Microsoft has a no-refund policy. So if you don't want to pay those higher prices, you might want to head over to Software Keep and take my 20% off code with you. That way you can save even more money. Now that's enough about that. It's time to get back to our regularly scheduled program. And it looks good, man. I like how everything's just kind of centered. You got that camera right there in the middle. And when you grab it, it just doesn't get in the way of anything. But if you hold it up kind of like, you know, like a book or a piece of paper, it fits nicely in the hand. And it's just, it's not too heavy. It's not too large. So you can do a lot of functional things with it in one hand. But on the other hand, we do have the Galaxy S8. This is the regular Galaxy S8. And then I also have the Galaxy S8. Oh, is it tab? Tab. The Galaxy Galaxy Tab S8 and the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. See how much difference there is in the two? And then we have something from Apple. I don't have much Apple on this channel, but we do have an iPad 12.9 inch tablet here, the, the iPad. And uh, let me just kind of show you that, how that looks up against this 11 inch uh, one plus pad here. So yeah, we got, we got some size difference there, but it takes on almost the shape of an iPad, but the 10 by seven tablet size gives you a seven to five screen ratio. So it's really comfortable in the hands. It's almost book sized, but it's got the same thickness, but it's about 45 grams heavier than the Galaxy Tab S8, which I showed you just a moment ago. It's got high quality build materials with a great fit and finish overall. When you feel the buttons, you're gonna notice that they're really solid. The placement is good, but there's no fingerprint scanner on the power button, which is kind of a downside to me. Going back to the screen size, it's got an 11.61 inch screen and it's got some comfortable bezels around it. So it's comfortable to hold and portrait a landscape without any accidental touches. The colors are rich, but you also get real as one of the color mode options, which looks gorgeous to me. So I just keep it on that. The only biometric security is face unlock. So you do have that instead of a fingerprint scanner. The screen gets bright enough outside to use in the shade, but in direct sunlight, it performs exactly like the Galaxy S8, which gives it kind of a washed out look with a lot of screen glare. If you're one of those people who likes to pop open the hood and see what's running underneath, you'll see that it's running Android 13 with Oxygen OS 13.1. It feels exactly like the OnePlus 11 software. This is where I actually get kind of sad because the continuity between the OnePlus 11 and the OnePlus Pad is kind of broken because they don't really communicate with each other just yet. And that's simply because the OnePlus 11 is running Oxygen OS 13 versus 13.1. They have to be on the same software in order for them to work together with all the stuff that they bragged about in their keynote speech. And I can't wait to see that because like, I, I love the continuity between tablet and phone because they're supposed to be an extension of one or the other. 
But on a good note, the Oxygen 13.1 UI is really smooth and the RAM management keeps it running that way while multiple apps are open. I did try some gaming on this thing and it ran some pretty intense games with no problems at all. They managed to throw in Dolby Atmos. It's definitely present, so the speakers sound great while watching your content. I compared it to the Galaxy Tab S8 as I was watching Ozark. Now, the Galaxy Tab S8 is a little louder and fuller at 50% volume, but once you start turning it up towards 100%, maybe even 80, uh, they're equally loud and they both sound full even at 100% volume. Now, just like on the OnePlus 11, the battery is hard to kill. You're gonna get great battery life out of the OnePlus pad. Actually, it's got the same SuperVOOC charging because it comes with the charger and the cable in the box. Oh man, I love having that. Like they don't really do that no more these days, but you can get this thing charged up from like 1% to 100 in less than an hour. Rear facing cameras on tablets are never really my thing, but they both definitely get the job done. You get up to 10 times zoom on the rear 13 megapixel camera, but that front facing camera is what I'm concerned about because I use it for meetings and stuff like that. You get an eight megapixel camera and it sits at the perfect angle when it's docked in that keyboard for video calls. Now bringing up the keyboard case, it has a premium build and the keys are very tactile and have decent travel with a nice clickety sound. The 10 by seven tablet ratio allows for the keyboard to have a ceramic trackpad, which is something you don't get on the Galaxy Tab S8. The pen is a great addition too. It's built just like a pencil. In fact, it's built a lot like the Apple Pencil. And there's a flat space carved out for it with inductive charging right on the OnePlus pad. This tells me that the pad was built with the stylus in mind. However, the feel of it across the screen feels super slippery, like plastic on glass. The OnePlus Notes app is pretty good and it really gets the job done but it's got a long way to go before we can start comparing it to Samsung Notes, especially how it takes advantage of the S8's S Pen. The OnePlus Pad is the company's first ever tablet, and I think it was a necessary product to build out the ecosystem. I really enjoyed using it because of its shape, size, and weight. It's an easy yes for me as far as getting access to what's in my wallet. As long as they promise to build out that community and continuity between the OnePlus 11 and the OnePlus Pad, they've got a loyal customer in me. So Raylan, what do you think about this new OnePlus Pad, huh? What you think about it? Well, I think Raylan approves. I'm no expert in this kind of stuff, but what I do know is when Raylan gives his approval, it is what it is. Now y'all keep being good to each other and we'll see you when we see you. What if you could, uh, let's see, wake up with your phone at like, I don't know, 15, 20%. And then you could charge it in 22 minutes from 15% to 100% inside of 22 minutes. Go on all day using your phone as if you wanted to, like taking pictures, taking video, playing some games. You get on WhatsApp, send some messages.